the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Welcome to Trinity on Main, the United Church in the heart of Newmarket. On Tuesday afternoons, we will be having outdoor worship, so that's Tuesday at 1.30 on our front lawn. We have some chairs, but if you prefer to bring your own chair, you're certainly welcome to do so. We'll have time of prayer, scripture, and song. As we gather today, we gather with grateful hearts and we acknowledge the history, spirituality, and culture and stewardship of this land of the Indigenous people. We are on the traditional territories of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe people, whose presence continues here this day. We'd also like to acknowledge the land on which we are located is the meeting place of two treaties, the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and those of the First Nations of the Williams Treaty. We'd also like to acknowledge the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation, our closest Indigenous community and the congregation there, Georgina Island Native United Church as a partner in faith. We acknowledge the grief that our Indigenous siblings are facing right now, and we stand with them and pray for them. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations as we live, work, and worship on this traditional territory. Let us pray. Hear these words of Jesus. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We come to worship needing love in our lives, love of family and friends, strangers and enemies. In this time of worship, let us open our hearts to God and to one another, and may we discover God's love, which passes all understanding. Let us pray. Gracious God, the truth is in us, and the truth is that we forget we are in one another. We let the sun go down on our anger, and we make room for much dishonesty, often obsessing on things that do not matter a day or a week or a month from our now. We fail to let your grace speak through us. At times in bitterness and anger, we grieve your Holy Spirit, and we fail to live up to your claim upon us. We fall short by simply being unkind. God of grace, give us tenderness and forgiveness. Give us faith that we might live in love as Christ loved us. We pray in Jesus' name, the one who loved and treated all with compassion and kindness. And we follow his example as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. No matter where we are, God is there, and no matter what we have done, God forgives. No matter our reluctance to accept God, God accepts us. With that assurance, live. Live in the fullness of life. Live each day afresh. Let go of the past and live today in hope and in freedom. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to God, who is our rock and our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the summer of 2013, I was invited to attend Greenbelt with 100 other church leaders from the United Church. The then moderator, the Reverend Dr. Gary Patterson, gathered 100 ministers to attend and to explore topics of church and change and leadership and we did that all around the Greenbelt Festival. The festival celebrates faith and the arts and action. When I attended, Greenbelt was held in Cheltenham racetrack. Some people camped there and many of us stayed in the town of Cheltenham and then walked to the racetrack for the daily activities. All the United Church ministers stayed in a residence, enjoying breakfast together, then worship and learning before we headed out to the festival. Greenbelt was abuzz with a variety of activities. Christian music played on a variety of stages. Folk and rock kept our feet moving to the beat. One evening we enjoyed beer and hymns, singing some of the old favorite as well as new hymns. There were six stages for speakers, each speaker addressing their own passion and their own faith. With each speaker coming from a different foundation of faith, it left us, the listeners, with much to think about and discuss with others. It was a wonderful opportunity to stir 
and to question and to grow in faith. There were many booths that lined the walkways from stage to stage, and each booth selling some crafts or food or clothing. Is, it was one such booth that displayed a t-shirt that grabbed my attention and my heart. The soft gray t-shirt with large black writing saying, love life and live love. Four simple words, four words that captured my heart. In a field miles away from home, with voices of speakers all around, people and music swirling all around me, seeing those words printed on a simple t-shirt caught my eyes. And it brought tears to my eyes, and I hope that no one else noticed my tears. However, my tears were a reaction to these simple words because I was moved so deeply. Their message reached deep, so deep that they have made a home in my heart and remain there still. Love life, live love. These words capture the best of a life of faith, actions to strive for. For me, love life means loving the gift of life, giving thanks for each new day that God has blessed us with, giving thanks for waking up, giving thanks for our bodies, no matter their size or shape, and thanking our bodies for all that they do for us to keep us moving throughout the day. Loving life means giving thanks for this big, beautiful world and taking time to notice all that creation has to offer. Giving thanks for people we encounter and appreciating their beauty as well. Love life means loving and enjoying the gift of life and all the gifts that life has to offer. In June, Reverend Debbie shared with us here at Trinity how the spiritual discipline of a gratitude journal helped her to refocus her heart and spirit to the joy in life. Reverend Debbie had lost her love of life and the daily discipline of writing five things that she was grateful for helped her day by day to see once again the beauty of all that life has to offer. After listening to Reverend Debbie's reflection, I went out and I bought myself a beautiful new journal to re-engage this spiritual discipline in my life once again. And she is right, writing down, taking time to write down five things that we are grateful for, that I was grateful for, it makes a difference. Not just thinking about them, but writing them down makes a difference. And this spiritual discipline re-engages the sense of awe in the beauty in the everyday moments of life. Love life, live love. Paul's letter to the Ephesians is a letter that, of encouragement to the church in order to strengthen the followers of Jesus in their faith and to remind them that they are all part of the body of Christ in the world. Christ is the head and they are all members of the body and each of them is gifted by Christ and their gifts are needed in the world. Jesus enables them and us to use those gifts to make a difference. In this letter, Paul addresses a life with God, a new life with God that is transformed and transforming each life by God's love. Paul reminded that God is calling God's people to a path of love, a life of love, inviting them and us to live love. In this passage, Paul gives rules or guidelines or steps to a living a life with God, learning from God, and living a life that reflects God's love in the world. Reading from the, um, reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, 
23 to 5, verse 2. Be new in the attitude of your minds and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so they have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love. As Christ loved us, loved us, and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of God. Thanks be to God. As I read this message, it struck me that the power of words, the words that we speak. Paul says, put away falsehood. Speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. In other words, since we are one family or one body or one community, not being truthful to our neighbors, we in turn are not being truthful to ourselves. And not being truthful with ourselves hurts us. It hurts us body, mind, and spirit. And not being truthful with our neighbors hurts us as the body of Christ. Paul invites followers of Jesus to speak only words that are grace-filled and that build up others. We need to hear those positive words in our lives. We hunger for them, don't we? It is not easy to hear, I'm sorry, it's so easy to hear negative words. They can be so loud in the world. Words of racism and hatred echo throughout our land. Words that say that we are not enough are seen in magazines, commercials, and social media. Our positive words can make a difference. Our words have the power to change things. In the noisy world, it can be difficult to hear the still, small voice of God speaking words of love and grace. You and I can be messengers of God's love. We can speak those words to one another so that they may be heard. Imagine what a kind word can mean in someone's life. We have the power in our own words, in everyday moments, to transform someone's day, to touch someone's spirit, to touch someone's heart. Let us use words that are honest, words that are grace-filled, and that build up. Not so long ago, I was driving home, and as I was getting to my driveway, on the other side of my driveway, there was a young man picking up the garbage, or garbage bags, and putting them into the truck. So I waited for him to finish, and then when he was finished, I drove into our driveway. As I was getting out of the car, the driver of the truck stood at the bottom of the driveway trying to get my attention. And then she said to me, thank you. Thank you for letting this person do his work and keep him safe. 
that truck driver will never know how much her words of gratitude and encouragement, how much they touched my heart and how much they built me up. Her words of grace. Paul invites his listeners to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Earlier I said the best days in our best days in faith, love life and live love, captures a life of faith. However, we're not always at our best and our neighbors are not always living their best days or the days that they hope for. We all make mistakes and we all fall short. We, di we disappoint ourselves and we disappoint others with our words and with our actions. We need forgiveness and we need to forgive others. Forgiveness of self and others is a well-worn step on the path of love. We forgive because we know forgiveness from Jesus. We understand the importance of that and it frees us to forgive others. Jesus walked the path of love and invites us to follow. We do not walk that path alone. Christ walks with us and we walk with one another, helping each other and encouraging each other. Living love is walking the path of love, the path of love that is paved with honest, grace-filled words that build up, as well as acts of kindness and forgiveness. Love life and live love. Let us imagine a world that is marked by love and kindness. What a difference it would make in our community, in our neighborhood, in our family, and in our world. Tuesday evening, the Worship and Faith Development Committee met in our backyard. We met for our, our meetings as we start our monthly meetings again. And we took time to imagine a world marked with love and kindness. Imagining how it would change families and community was really easy. But imagining how it might change the world stretched our imaginations. If everyone was kind to one another, there would be peace and harmony. There would be less need for police or judicial systems. There would be no racism or xenophobia. Love and kindness in word and action has the power to change the world. Let us see how far we can go. Amen. No. 
one can alter your servant's undergird. Keep bright in us the vision of days when war shall cease, when hatred and division give way United in love, united in the Holy Spirit, let us offer our prayers for God's people. Let us pray. Sustaining God, we offer an alphabetical litany to you. Please shine your light on aged adults who feel isolated in a pandemic. Birth and new life, cancellations, Delta and other variants of COVID-19 which are highly transmittable. Ethiopia, where civil war rages. Food pantries, grocery store employees and all essential personnel. Health care systems and those who administer them. Illness and all who are coping daily with the fragility of their bodies. Joyful celebrations, kisses and kindness. Loneliness moms and dads, nurses, Olympians, the 11,000 athletes representing more than 200 con countries, postponements, questions, reunions and reopenings, separations of families caused by migration, divorce, death and estrangement, terrorism, its victims and its perpetrators, universities and all other institutions of learning. Vaccination efforts, especially in the countries like Haiti and the Democratic Republic of Congo, where less than 1% of population has received full vaccinations. Wildfires and weariness, xenophobia, young persons and Zoom fatigue. Lord, Hear our prayers. We thank you for the ways that we've learned to cope with grief and anxieties, for the communities we have built, for the grace that we have received. We lift up all the losses of the pandemic and pray for those who are suffering still. We pray for the 200 million persons who've been diagnosed with COVID-19 and for everyone who cares for them. God of grace, we give thanks for your light, the light that lights our pathway of love and that you walk with us. May we be messengers of your love, sharing words of kindness, grace and love to all we meet. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, our brother and friend. Amen. Go now into this week with courage and a caring and daring heart. Use words of love and kindness. Surprise someone with a message of love. Embrace forgiveness and go in peace. Go with the blessing of God, our loving parent, mother and father of us all, of Jesus, our Christ and friend, and of the Holy Spirit who reaches us and helps us to reach out in love. Go now in peace.
Amen.